Hello everyone, my name is Alok Mishra and welcome to my channel English Literature Education. Today we are going to discuss metaphysical poetry. So before we get into the details, let's start with a very introduction. The first question that arises in front of us is what is metaphysical poetry? In defining this, many scholars go berserk. They actually get into the etymological details of metaphysics, metaphysical, and thus they get into the philosophical details rather than describing metaphysical poetry. However, on this channel, we are not going to do that. We are going to keep it simple. So I will start with metaphysical poetry and strictly with metaphysical poetry. So the first question that we have to deal is, what is metaphysical poetry? There might be many definitions, there might be many agreements and disagreements. But before getting into that, let's start with a basic introductory definition that will suffice the needs of the absolute beingness. So, in my opinion, metaphysical poetry is the body of works produced by certain poets of the metaphysical school of poetry that has spanned around the first quarter of the 20th century. The poetry produced by this school of poets introduced some basic and some essential features that defined their class later. So what were these features that made these poets and these poems aloof from all other poets and poetry? Let's get one by one into that. So what are the features that differentiate and distinguish metaphysical poetry from other forms of poetry? These features are being highly intellectual, using sharp and witty language, using rich imagery, using conceits, using far-fetched images, being religious and spiritual, and at times sensual as well. And there are some other features that we find when we get deeper into the study of metaphysical poetry. And one more feature that we have to mention is that metaphysical poetry deals even with the common themes in an uncommon way that makes these poems highly distinguished and also highly unconventional. After defining metaphysical poetry and also getting basic details of the features, we have to know who were the prominent poets of this school of poetry. As you all know, when we talk about metaphysical poetry, the first name that comes to our mind is undoubtedly John Donne. So John Donne was supposed leader of this school of poetry and following him were the poets like Andrew Marvel, Henry Wagon, George Herbert, Richard Crosser and a few others. However, the most prominent book published in this area by Herbert Grierson in 1921, Metaphysical Lyrics and Poems of the 17th century includes even the poets like John Howell, Thomas Stanley, Henry King and many other, even John Milton. So it is highly debatable. When does a poet become metaphysical and how does a poem become metaphysical? On this very interesting point, very interesting argument was made by T.S. Eliot in one of his essays that he wrote on metaphysical poetry. T.S. Eliot told, it's hard to define metaphysical poetry, it's hard to distinguish metaphysical poets because we don't have a certain idea when does a poet become metaphysical and when and how does a poetry, does a poem, does a collection of poem become metaphysical in characteristic and a style. So this is something which remains and has always been remaining ambiguous. Now to understand metaphysical poetry in a better way, we have to go through some examples. Here are some examples of the metaphysical conceits. If they be two, they are two so as stiff twin compasses are two. By soul, the fixed foot makes no show to move but doth if the other do. In his poem, a valediction for witting mounting, John Donne compares himself and his beloved to a compass and he applies the image as if to qualify that he or his beloved can move but neither without each other's movement. This kind of imagery is very unconventional for common poems and very new to common readers. Here are some examples of far-fetched imagery. 
so doth each tear which thee doth wear a globe ye world by that impression grow till thy tears mixed with mine do overflow this world by water sent from thee my heaven dissolve so in the lines from the poem a benediction of weeping john dun compares a possible scenario with the use a deluge that can overflow each and everything on earth and entire earth itself so the poet believes that if he and his beloveds tears mix with each other the situation created might overflow this world and this is an example of far fetched images and here are some examples of unconventional style of dealing with conventional and common ideas the phoenix riddle hath more wit by us we two being one are it so to one neutral thing both sexes fit we die and rise the same and prove mysterious by this love in these lines from the canonization john dun compares the love between himself and his beloved to the mythological creature phoenix the phoenix is a creature a bird which dies and comes out of its ashes so by doing this comparison the poet tries to imply the idea that the love between himself and his beloved is eternal and it will never end so friends i hope this video might have helped you in understanding the basic concepts of metaphysical poetry after watching this video there will be a clear concept in your mind about what metaphysical poetry is who are the prominent poets in the school of metaphysical poetry and what are some prominent examples getting into the deal is something that i'll be doing in the next video that will release on this very subject so wait for the next and till then goodbye and take care